What's going on everybody? I'm Johnny Brook. Welcome back to another Crafted Workshop video. And today's project is a little bit different. So this is my buddy Alex. He runs the YouTube channel Single Track Sampler. He's a mountain bike YouTuber and this van is his house. So before this, he was living in his hatchback Sheila for four years and has finally upgraded to this Dodge Promaster van. And I've been helping him kind of build it out and turn it into a camper. And this week's project is gonna be building this awesome convertible bed. It converts from a bed to a couch super easily. You can do it from inside the van and it just turned out awesome. So hopefully you guys enjoy this one. Let's go ahead and get started with the build. The first thing to build for the bed was the rails which support the bed platform. And I made these out of an eight foot long two by eight. And the first step was to rip the board roughly in half over at the table saw. And I prefer doing this rather than buying two by fours as the two by eights in my area are made of Southern yellow pine, which is much stronger than the white wood that two by fours are made from. That said, if you don't have a table saw, you could of course just use two by fours here. After ripping the boards to width, I cut them to their final length at the miter saw, and we made the rails 80 inches long, which is just long enough to support the bed platform without having the rails extend into the main part of the van's cabin. To help reduce wear on the rails and also help the bed platform slide while converting it from bed mode to couch mode, I decided to line the top edge of the rails with HDPE, which is the same plastic they use on those cheap cutting boards you see like at the dollar store. This stuff is incredibly smooth and I bought this 12 inch by 24 inch sheet on Amazon for about 13 bucks. I'll link to it in the video description below. So first I ripped the sheet into inch and a half wide strips to match the width of the rails and the HDPE ripped surprisingly well on the table saw with no melting or chipping. Next I started installing the strips on the top of the rails using countersunk one inch screws. And it's really important that the screw heads are well below the surface of the HDPE here so that the bed platform can slide without catching. I just kept installing strips until both of the rails were covered and then I could install the rails in the van. Before we did that, we needed to figure out the exact height we wanted for the rails. Alex is planning to use the area under the bed for bike storage and the bikes will be on sliding trays for easy loading and unloading. Because of that, we had to make sure the highest point on Alex's bike, the seat in this case, cleared the underside of the bed platform. After figuring out this measurement, I could get the rails mounted to the walls. And when building out the van, I had Alex add furring strips along the inside of the walls, which are attached directly to the metal of the van. And these furring strips basically act as studs and provide a perfect location for fastening load bearing items like these bed rails. After marking the lines, I installed the rails using these massive two and a quarter inch structural screws, adding two screws in each furring strip. These rails definitely weren't going anywhere once all the screws were added. <laughs> to help support the bed platform and keep it from sagging in the middle, we added a cross support rail using more of the southern yellow pine. I drilled a few pocket holes on each end of the rail and then we attached the cross support to the rails, making sure it was behind where the back of Alex's seat would be on the bike trays. Oh wow, that's actually like crazy strong. Yeah. The final piece to add to the rails were some stops on the front of the rails to keep the bed platform from sliding off when converting from couch mode to bed mode. And speaking of the bed platform, next I could get to work on that. The platform is a simple framework of two by twos covered in half inch plywood. And if I were to build this again, I'd probably use two by fours rather than two by twos here, just for a little bit more structural rigidity, but the two by twos are plenty strong and I actually already had a bunch on hand, so that's what I used. After cutting the two by twos to size, I marked out the spacing of the two by twos on the longer pieces and then attached them using two inch screws through each joint. And these are basically the same construction as any stud wall with the spacing between the studs just a little bit more compact. Since the bed platform needed to hinge in the middle, I actually had to create two individual frame sections. And these were different sizes with the back platform being narrow enough so that it would clear the ceiling of the van when it was in couch mode. Once those were both done, I ripped the half inch plywood to width to match the frames over the table saw. And I had the home center cut the panels to the length at 70 inches, which made things a lot easier for me. And if you don't have a table saw, you could just have the home center make both of those cuts for you. With the panels cut to their final size, I could attach them to the frames using wood glue and one inch brad nails using my Aero brad nailer. After the glue dried, I broke the edges with a sander just to make them a little bit less sharp, and then we can move the platforms into the van. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's so smooth. And we immediately noticed a little bit of flex in that back panel, which we fixed by adding another cross support rail at the back end of the rails. To attach the two panels to each other, I used two 30 inch long piano hinges, and I used one inch screws to attach the hinges rather than the screws included with the hinges so that the screws went through the plywood and into the frame below. 
And while I install the hinges, let's talk about the sponsor of this week's video, Aero Faster. Aero makes a wide variety of fastening tools, including staple guns, nailers, glue guns, riveters, and more. And I use the Aero PT18G Brad Nailer, Aero Brad Nails, and the TR400DT Hot Glue Gun in this build. And I have a ton of projects featuring Aero tools coming up, including some exclusive projects going up on the Aero site, so stay tuned. If you'd like to learn more about Aero and their full line of fastening tools and fasteners, check out the link in the video description below. After installing the hinges, we went to try out the platform and <laughs> noticed we had a bit of a problem. All right, so things were going along really smoothly. We got the whole platform in. It's looking great on the rails, fits perfectly. But then we went to lift the platform and it interferes with the wall. So as it turns out, these walls curve in a lot. I don't know how we didn't notice that during kind of the design phase, but basically it means that I'm gonna have to take this rear platform off, cut a diagonal on each corner, kind of nip off each corner. That way it'll fit up against the wall. And then we're gonna also need to add an extra kind of support bar here at the back. And that way it'll support those kind of diagonal corners. So it's not a huge deal, but it means that we're not gonna finish this up today. Gonna have to come back to this later this week and get it buttoned up. So I'll check back in then. A few days later, I got back to work on the platform, first removing the screws from the area I'd be cutting so I didn't hit them with my saw blade. I marked four and a half inches in on each corner, which would give enough clearance for the platform to raise all the way up, and then drew a line to connect that measurement with the other corner of the panel. I used my track saw to cut off this section, but a circular saw on a straight edge would work in the exact same way. Next, I needed to cut a few pieces of two by two to replace the studs that were cut off, and I did this at the miter saw. We ended up with an angle of about six degrees, which I cut on one end of the two by two, and then marked the length at the other end, referencing the actual frame. After cutting the two by two to fit, I attached it with more glue and brad nails, also making sure to reinstall the two inch screws through each end. After test fitting and making sure the panel fit, which it did thankfully, I went ahead and drilled a hole through the back corner of the panel for some rope to run through. And this rope is part of the pulley system, which is used to help convert the bed into couch mode. Speaking of which, next we could get the pulleys installed on the wall of the van, and the system uses two pulleys, each rated at something like 420 pounds, total overkill, and the pulleys are attached into the furring strips using inch and a quarter screws. All right, here's the real test. Are you ready? So imagine if you had a hand. Oh, it's so easy. With the pulleys installed, we could test the system and it worked flawlessly. This was an idea that just kind of came to me at 3 a.m. one morning. It's one of those ideas that just pop into your head after trying to come up with a solution for a few days and just gotta love it when that happens. Wow, that's so good. After verifying the system worked, I added some upright supports, which support the back of the platform when it's in couch mode. And I used the cutoffs from the rails for this. Also, as you might've noticed, we had to move that back pulley forward to the next furring strip just to make room for the upright support, but this didn't change the functionality of the pulley system at all. <laughs> That's the look of someone who's very happy with yes. his work. <laughs> Next, I needed to add some kind of a locking functionality to keep the platform from moving around when it's in either mode and while Alex is driving. To do this, I added a barrel bolt at each end of the platform and I drilled one set of holes for the barrel bolt in the position where the platform would be when in bed mode, and then drilled another set of holes to lock the platform in place when it's in couch mode. And after getting the barrel bolt set up, we could finally actually test out couch mode and it turned out perfectly. The angle is just right for lounging and hanging out and it's really easy to get onto the platform using Alex's fridge as a step. Oh my gosh, dude, seriously? No. That is nice, dude. Let's put the mattress on. Oh my God. Next, we could lower the platform back into bed mode and get the mattress added. And Alex found this inexpensive six inch thick foam mattress, which I'll link to in the video description, but it was just thick enough to be comfy without sacrificing headroom, which is really important since you have just enough to sit up when you're in the bed. Oh my God, it's so good. Yo, get up in there. It's so freaking comfortable! <laughs> and while we test out the bed, let's talk about one of the other sponsors of this week's video, Acme Tools. Acme Tools has served the contractor, woodworker, and do-it-yourselfer since 1948 with a wide selection of tools and equipment from all the major manufacturers. And Acme carries all of my favorite brands, including Powermatic, Festool, Milwaukee, DeWalt, and more. And their customer service representatives can help you find the right tool for your next project. To learn more about Acme Tools, check out the link in the video description below. And thanks again to Acme Tools for sponsoring this week's project. <laughs> that is... What a genius idea, dude! serious there. comfort. Oh my god! 
Once the mattress was added, we noticed that the mattress wanted to slide off the front of the platform when going from bed mode to couch mode, so I added a little cleat to the front of the rail just to keep this from happening. With that, the bed was basically done and we could christen it with our stickers. And there were a few other items I helped Alex with that went with the bed, the first of which was a set of bike storage trays. And these are based on a design by the Far Out Ride blog, which I'll link to in the video description. And these trays allow you to store two bikes plus a bunch of gear on each tray. And the trays are mounted to 48 inch locking drawer slides, which allow the trays to be slid out of the back of the van for easy loading and unloading. And the slides didn't quite arrive in time for this video, but here's the system in Far Out Ride's van just to give you an idea of how it works. The last piece for the van was a little surprise for Alex, a laser cut line with his logo and his channel slogan. I've had this Ikea bamboo cutting board hanging around for a while with no real use, and it just happened to fit perfectly on the underside of the bed platform, which will be in the background when Alex does his weekly live streams. So after the full spectrum used laser cutter was done engraving the sign, I sanded it just to remove any burn marks and then applied a few coats of spray lacquer to seal it. And with everything done, I loaded up and headed to downtown Asheville to finish up the van, get the final shots, and give Alex the sign. It's wood. I expect that. <laughs> Dude, no way. Yo, that's so sick. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. That's why you were asking me what font. Dude, oh my gosh, that's so cool. Live free, ride hard, and get stoked. Wow, this is really nice. Dude, it's going right in the middle. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Oh my gosh. It's pretty. Thank you so much, man. No problem, dude. Better do it right first try. To mount the sign, I used my Aero Hot Glue Gun to temporarily attach the sign and then reinforce it with one inch screws. You gotta make sure these screws are not so long that they're gonna poke through the bed platform, which they didn't. There you go, dude. It's officially christened. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I'm so stoked on this. After mounting the sign, we slid in the bike trays just for a test fit, and they were perfect. Actually, a little wider than they even needed to be. We might end up trimming them down later. The final little piece to add to the van was this little bit of trim, which kind of had to wait until the bed rails were in, and I installed this using more hot glue. And hot glue is kind of the perfect adhesive for the van. It's strong enough to hold, but can easily be removed if things need to be changed. And with that, I'm calling this van project complete, at least for now. The van is, of course, still a work in progress, but this bed was the last big piece to add to get this van road worthy. And all that was left to do was have an inaugural beer in the van with Alex. All right, guys, so hopefully you enjoyed this one. This was just such a fun project. It's always cool helping Alex out with the van. You guys might have seen me helping him out in his video on his channel and also on Seth's video in his channel, Seth's Bike Hacks. But this really, I think, made the van feel like a living space, you know? It's official. I mean, it tied it together. It's it's really functional. Like, I think this started out as like a kind of a crazy idea and evolved along the way, but it actually works. It's pretty dang easy to get it from this kind of couch mode to bed mode and back and forth because you're gonna be doing that a good bit yeah every day the pulley system works great the fan just happened to line up <laughs> pretty much perfectly yeah uh, that was lucky yeah that was really lucky uh, i think this is gonna work out really really well so hopefully you guys enjoyed this one if you don't already go ahead and get subscribed i put out new project videos like this pretty much every week also go ahead and of course subscribe to alex's channel while you're at it he's an awesome mountain bike youtuber but covers all kinds of other stuff as well including the uh the van Van life, life is lifestyle, coming baby. In, yeah. yeah, so I'll have links to all the tools and materials I use in the video description below. I'll also just have the SketchUp file available for this. We kind of modeled it up in SketchUp a couple weeks ago. And then last, uh, I have added that YouTube sponsor feature to the channel, so definitely check that out. I've got all kinds of cool perks, uh, exclusive live streams, exclusive monthly vlogs. Uh, you get a nice little icon next to your comments, all that kind of stuff. So there will be a sponsor button below the video, but also I'll have a link somewhere on the screen as well. So thanks again for watching, everybody. And until next time, happy building. Cheers, buddy.